This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. Welcome to Inside the Jungle. This is your show for all things Auburn basketball. I'm your co-host, Jace Phillips, and I'm joined by my other co-host, Chandler Fullman. Chandler, how you doing today? Jace, I honestly could not be better. Uh, I got, uh, for Christmas, I got uh, a new set of tidy whities um, So, and I got, my mom got me a toothbrush and some toothpaste, so... Um, Welcome to adult world, I guess. Yeah. Hey, those aren't um, bad things to have. Nope. <laughs> any any little thing that I use daily can save me some money, so I'm happy with That's it. That's right. How was your Christmas? Uh, it was pretty good. I got my, my new little pup sitting here next to me, Lutz. Uh, so he's he's good. been pretty good so far, so we'll see how that keeps up. But it was a pretty good Christmas. Got to spend some time with the family. Um went on a cruise so it it was just a good time to get away and spend some time with family well since our last episode um auburn basketball has gone two and two are we lost to memphis in atlanta beat georgia state um lost to usc and then we beat washington um jace what's your uh what how do you feel about Auburn basketball right now, heading into SEC play starting tomorrow, um, probably starting today if this uh, if this episode comes out tomorrow. Um, how how what, what's your feelings towards Auburn basketball? You know, I I really don't know how to feel. Um, you, you know, strange as that might seem, you know, I was really excited to start the season, and we were winning some games, and you know these feelings of not knowing how to feel didn't necessarily come because of the losses, but just kind of how we've been playing, even in the wins um, that have accumulated. And, um, you know, I I am a little nervous. I'm not going to lie, but I will say that coming off of this, the way we looked in this last game, um, if we can keep that energy going, I I will feel a lot better. Yeah, I I agree. Um, Excited. Um, based on our results from our last game um, versus Washington, which was um, up in, uh, what, Seattle, up in yep. Alaska Airlines Arena, um, which I don't know, that doesn't make much sense to me why you would have Alaska Airlines Arena in the state of Washington, but that's beside the point. Um, but in my opinion, Auburn played one of their best games of the year um, up to this point um, against Washington. That was a very impressive game. Yep. Had had command for a lot of the game in that second half, really just really, pull, you know, pulled away. And, uh, you know, a lot of the times what we end up having some struggles where, you know, we'll give up a big run and we'll go on a run, then we'll kind of hit a lull. And we just really didn't hit that lull in the second half of that game. We just kept pouring it on. And shout out to the – Two big, two big guys inside. Because if we can get that kind of production from from them, then the, eventually that guard play is gonna, you know, come on with it. Yeah, I agree. But before we before we give away too much about that game, let's go ahead and uh, move into talking about a um, a not as popular topic. Um, which was our holiday hoops giving game versus Memphis in Atlanta. Um, and that was an ugly game. Um, thankfully not near as ugly as our, uh, as our win versus what was it early in the year? Northwestern. Yeah. 43, 42 game. Oh gosh. That was the ugliest game I've ever seen. But about the opposite defensive performance of that game was what happened in yes. this Memphis game. Yes. Um we did fall to Memphis eighty two to seventy three and I can I, mean, I can kind of understand, you know, you're not gonna have the best day shooting every now and then. But what I was very disappointed in by that game and to me was the most disappointing game of the season was the our effort defensively. I mean we gave up open shots, we gave up easy easy baskets underneath the goal. 
and I was yeah. just very disappointed in the in our intensity, and we really didn't show much intensity at all until the last four minutes. Yeah, you said uh, it was about the, or quite the opposite of our performance versus Northwestern. Well, we gave up forty two points versus Northwestern. This game we gave up eighty two, so nearly two points away from being from doubling the total um, versus Northwestern. Um, but so yes, the the defensive effort was quite disappointing. Um, but um, I didn't think it was the the ugliest game Auburn uh, could have played. I mean, we didn't shoot horrible. Um, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. I didn't think we didn't. We didn't play awful. I thought Memphis just played. Memphis played pretty good. Yeah. Um, Memphis, I feel like is is a solid team. Um, and you do not want a, a first round matchup versus the, um, come March. Nope. So, um, Jace, tell us who had a big game, um, versus, versus Memphis. You know, I thought KD had a pretty good game. Um, Wendell had a pretty good game. Um, Chris Moore really stepped up in that game. Um, Wendell and KD both scoring 14 and Wendell score, or sorry, and Chris Moore scoring 12. Um, you know, they really gave us some good production, but, you know, and Janai gave us 11, 11 points, but we just really didn't rebound the basketball very well. Janai was our leading rebounder and he only had six. Yeah. Um, so we really didn't rebound the ball very well and, um, you know, I felt like we also gave up a lot of second chance points. Yeah, I I agree. Um we we got out rebounded um versus versus Memphis um by a total. We had thirty two rebounds, they had forty three. So when you get out rebounded by eleven, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to tough to win, um when when that's the case. But um Let's move on to a better topic versus Georgia State. Um, well, before we move on, uh, Jace, you went to the Holiday Hoops giving game. Yes. How was the How was the crowd there? Very good crowd. I would probably say it was ninety ninety percent Auburn. Um, you know, and you know that's what was so great about it is the Auburn basketball traveling now for away games. But what was so disappointing was that. There was just not a ton of opportunities for the crowd to really get into the game. Um, and so it was almost like we had that advantage, but we didn't get a ton of chance to, to really use it. Yeah, I uh, I agree. And um, there was just no – there wasn't really any momentum, uh, momentum moment, I guess you would say, um, that Auburn had where they just were able to fully take over the arena – and take over the moment. Um, but let's move on to the Georgia State game, which was a a better game for Auburn. I would not say it was the best game that Auburn had, um, but it was a better game because it was a victory. That's um, right. And at the end of the day, come March, um, that's what's going to matter because, let's be honest, what do you remember about the Georgia State game um, off the top of your head? Pro- not, probably not about probably it. not a lot. No. Um but looking at the stat line here um and re- refreshing my memory Jalen Williams. It was the Jalen Williams show versus Georgia State. And that's been a lot of this year. I feel like Jalen is especially here in these last few games. Jalen's really starting to come on. He's starting to get comfortable and he is really stepping up into that leadership role that I was hoping he would this year. Yeah, I I agree. And then uh, Jalen had 20 points on 8 of 11 shooting from the field. Um, I, that That's big, big time when you can go 8 of 11. And then another leader, um, and he's been a leader all year, is Wendell Green. Definitely. Um, and Wendell not did not necessarily have the best game shooting from the field, um, but Wendell was able to get to the – to the charity stripe a ton going 11 of 15 from the charity stripe. And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, 11 of 15 is not, I wouldn't call that great. I mean, what is that about 70, 72%? Um, but it is, 
it is a very solid um a very solid effort especially just getting to the free throw line 15 times for Wendell um Auburn got to the free throw line 30 times during the game and I thought that was the story of the game was Auburn being able to get to the free throw line 30 times um versus meant I mean versus Georgia State only getting there 20 times definitely um moving moving on um to our trip out west um first matchup against USC falling short 71 74 um but I really felt like that was we did not play that that bad of course I didn't get to watch that full game because I was in the middle of the ocean during that game but the little bit I did catch um I was really impressed with Janai Broom and I was especially impressed with Trey Donaldson I mean stepping up and scoring 12 points and getting four steals and you know I really felt like he um, really started to turn it on that game. And if we can get that kind of production from Trey Donaldson, then that would really, really help us because Chance Westry and, you know, Yoan Treyor, they're just not giving us a ton right now. So if Donaldson could really step up and fulfill that role that the other two are, are lacking, that would really help. So what is life like in a submarine or the, the, the stomach of a whale? You said you were in the middle of the ocean. On that, a cruise ship. Oh, on a cruise ship. I'm sorry. I had a I had a Bill Walton moment um, <laughs> right there in the middle of our podcast episode. Uh, he said he was in the middle of the ocean, and I just I kept thinking, well, the only two options are in the belly of a whale or in a submarine. But a cruise ship that makes sense too. Yeah. So, sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> had had a Bill Walton moment. Um, not to mention. Bill Walton covered these two West Coast games versus USC and versus Washington. Um, and, buddy, um, Bill Walton is on some serious drugs. <laughs> I mean, that dude is tripping. Um, I mean, I, that dude is – he is entertaining, but um, he he's out of control at some point, um, at some times, kind of like I am right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's get back to it. Um, but, but yeah, uh, Janai had a great game versus uh, USC um, with 16 points and eight rebounds. And like you said, Trey Donaldson stepping up big time. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Trey, especially on a night where Wendell Green went 0-4 from the field, only having two points. Um, Trey Donaldson stepping up, having 12 points. Uh, shooting four of eight from the field, two of three or two of four from the three point line, two of three from the free throw line. Huge night for Trey Donaldson, and I would love to see more of that version of Trey Donaldson um, come SEC play. Definitely, I think that I think that may be a a a, a game or a season changing moment for Trey. Um, I'm hoping and praying come um, come SEC play. Trey will see the court more and will be able to show out more like he did against USC. Um, and one one thing I will say, even though we lost, is we shot 79% from the, from the free throw line. And that's something that we've struggled with this year. So to see us shoot the ball well from there, um, you know, I felt like was will really help, you know, coming into SEC play is if we shoot the ball well from the free throw line. Yes, I, I agree 100%. Um, we went 19 of 24 from the free throw line, and we we went 8 of 23 from the three-point line. So um, it was 35% from the three. That's not horrible. Um, I mean, we have shot way worse this season from three. Um, but, but yes, like you said, I was, I was thoroughly impressed um, with our results, with our results from the free throw line um, versus USC. Um, I had um, a friend or two that went, and um, they said that seeing the crowd um, in in the Galen Center, or uh, is it the Galen Arena or the Galen Center um, in in Los Angeles, the Galen Center um, was was quite impressive. Not not an overwhelming um, a number of Auburn fans, but enough Auburn fans 
to make a difference. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Galen Center, or the attendance for that game, it says, was only 4,517. That's half of Neville Arena. Yeah. You think about it. Um, if only if a hundred Auburn fans showed up, I mean, a hundred fans could make a difference. Definitely. Um, in in that small of a setting, um, so I really think, um, like you said earlier, Auburn traveling is is amazing. Um, how Bruce Pearl has gotten this program, um, and ha- has gotten Auburn to Auburn basketball fans to travel is just incredible. Um, but let's move on to the last game um of the of the non conference schedule versus Washington and what a game to finish on. What a positive way to finish versus Washington. I'm telling you, you're not lying and, and like I said, what about our, our big guys stepping up right there? I mean, Jani Broom with eighteen and eight, Jalen Williams with eighteen and eight, and Chris Moore also giving us twelve. Yes, I thought that was uh I thought that was huge and just the overall performance versus versus Washington um was just I can't I can't say enough good things about that game. Um especially especially the second half. I mean Auburn scored 53 points during the second half. Um that's quite a performance um for for the Auburn Tigers. Um and they had four guys in double digits with Jalen Williams and Janai Broom uh, leading the way, tied with 18 points apiece. Um, two, and they had eight rebounds apiece as well. Two huge games from them. And just a, two more familiar names that we keep mentioning, Jalen Williams and Janai Broom. Yep. Um, just very positive games from them. And then the other two guys in double digits are two more names that we're pretty familiar with, Chris Moore and Wendell Green Jr. Um, Chris Moore, let's talk a little about Chris. I mean, just I, I, this was not planned at all. It's just I think Chris Moore deserves some uh, shout-out time because that dude has been impressive so far this season. Definitely. I was just about to say the same thing. I think he has definitely been the unsung hero uh, so far this year, I mean, no one expected him to come in and have this big of a role on this team. Or let me not say no one because I'm sure someone did, but I definitely will say that I I had always praised Chris Moore and was ready for for him to get his opportunity, but I I did not think that it would actually happen like this. Chris Moore, he was uh, two of two from the three point line, five of a six from the field. I mean, you can't just, I just can't say enough good things about Chris Moore and, and how big of an impact he has been, uh, so far this season. Um, and hopefully that continues on into SEC play. Um, Jace, let's, uh, let's get to talking about the next two or three games and the start of SEC play. Um, we open with Florida, um, probably, um, on the day this ep- the day this episode airs, it'll probably be today. Um, play Florida um, tomorrow, um, December twenty eighth, um, in Neville Arena. Jace, you'll be there. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that game? You know, I'm I'm very excited about it. Obviously, start of SEC play. I think we'll have we'll be re- ready to play and um, you know ready to go. But I. I am a little bit nervous just because Florida, it, it seems like no matter how good or bad they are, they always have given us a run for for our money since Bruce has been here. Um, and, I, you know, they got Colin Castleton returning for his 17th year. So, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I really do feel like he's been there forever. Um, and so he's always a scary threat. Um, but for the most part, I feel like, you know, if we play pr- play pretty decent or play well, then hopefully we should be able to win um, fairly comfortably. I hope. Yeah, I'm uh I'm I'm excited uh, to hopefully um, get to get to watch that game and um, just really see how Auburn does. I mean, we thankfully we have we have come come into this game playing USC and Washington. Um, two quality opponents. Um, but Florida, 
the SEC, I don't know. It's just an, a different level, uh, different type atmosphere, different game. So I'm I'm excited to see how we how we open up um, the SEC play in that game. Going into January, um, we're going to play at Georgia um, and then Arkansas. I think in Neville Arena. Yeah. So I think at Georgia, I think that's another uh, great opportunity for a win. I agree, um, and that's why to me this first game, Florida at home on the 28th and then going to Georgia. These are two, I mean, I hate to say must win for any SEC game, but these are two games that are really, really important to win. Yeah. Especially looking down the stretch, just how tough the SEC is going to be and just looking at just, you know, wins we need to get in the tournament. These are two that you should win. Yeah, I I agree um, 100%. Um, and those two games are huge before uh, welcoming Arkansas to town because, um, as everybody knows, Arkansas is a very good basketball team. They are no joke. Um, the That short guy that I can't stand, well, I can't remember his name, he has, he has Arkansas rolling, um, and I, I'm not a big fan of him, um, but... Got to give him credit, but he he does deserve credit. He is he has done a heck of a job, um, coming from coming from Nevada um, to Arkansas, um, quite quite unexpected for me, um, but very impressed by Eric Musselman. But I think that'll just about do it um, for for this episode of Inside the Jungle. Um, Before we go, really quick, I did want to. Just kind of talk about the women's team a little bit. Um, you know, we have had a huge turnaround from last year. We went 10-2 and two in the non-conference. And I know that, you know, that might not sound like much, but that is huge um, compared to where we were last year. Um, one game that I really, really want to highlight is the game against UCF um, on December the 3rd. You know, beating UCF by 40 points, 86-46. And UCF, I believe, is a team that made the tournament last year. Um, You know, just a heck of a game, heck of a performance by our women. Um, One game I want to especially look at and highlight, North Carolina A&T, Honesty Scott Grayson going for a career high 31 points. Um, You know, she is definitely a leader on this team along with Aisha Kulabali and Sanaya Wells. Um, and, you know, we really got this thing rolling. We've won by, I believe, 30 or more points the last three, four, five, maybe even six games. And, you know, that some people you might, you know, might make this use, well, you haven't played anybody. But to beat any teams by that margin of victory in that many consecutive games – um, you know, that goes to show you that this team is improving. This team is a team that might could be dangerous in SEC play. Um, we do open up with SEC play Thursday, December 29th. So the day after the men's opener, um, the women will open up at Ole Miss. Um, and Ole Miss is 11-2. and two, So, you, you know, obviously they won't be a team to look over, just like any team in the SEC. Um, it'll be a gauntlet every game and just like the men's league, the women's league is just as tough in the SEC. And I believe that we might could even get seven teams in the tournament this year. Yeah. The, the Johnny Harris and the women's squad has, have been quite impressive, um, so far this year, but, um, like we all know, SEC play is, is what it, what the season really comes down to and what really matters um, because, I mean, you look back at the men's teams under Tony Barbie and Jeff Lebo. I mean, I know they weren't as good, but I mean, still in non-conference play, usually Auburn was like eight and four, nine and three, something around around that range. But when it comes really time to matter, is SEC play, and that's when Auburn has really got to step up, and um, and the women's team included. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, both teams and see how they see how they perform. 
Um, but I think that'll just about do it uh, for this episode of Inside the Jungle. Uh, we thank you for listening, and we, uh, we hope you will join us next time. War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.